How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So, sorry I haven't had time to do a video lately, I haven't actually had access to this room, but I'm back and what I've got here is the Flash Forge Dreamer, which probably takes the cake to have the cutest startup sound out of any 3D printer I've ever heard. So today I'm going to be doing a review of the Flash Forge Dreamer. So I've actually been using one of the Flash Forge Dreamers for about two to three months now, and I found it to be an awesome machine. It's I, I'm actually really <laughs> impressed with it, despite its construction being mostly plastic, which I'll go into in a bit. Uh, it actually produces really, really good prints in ABS, PLA, and all sorts of exotic filaments. This is a Chinese company, Flash Forge. They originally started making clones of the older MakerBots, the MakerBot Replicator and such. But then, when MakerBot went in the fifth generation tangent, which we're not going to go into now, but what FlashForge did is went on their own tangent and started improving and adding to the original replicator design and created the FlashForge Dreamer. So the FlashForge Dreamer is a dual head machine, so it's got two extruders built into it, which means you can do two colors at once, or you can do a build material and a support material, or you can do really fancy stuff like, you know, a rubber material and a harder material and combine them together using separate STLs. So it's quite powerful in that regard. Uh, but because it's got two heads, the build envelope is slightly reduced on a machine this size. So you get 230 by 150 by 150 millimeters. So it's still pretty big, much bigger than say the Up Plus, but not as big as such something like the Mancati with the 250, 250, 300 millimeter build area. So talking about the machine itself, it's an all plastic construction reminiscent of the early uh, replicator machines from MakerBot and it has very similar mechanics inside. It's completely enclosed, which is really nice. So with printing ABS, it's really hard to keep the heat in so the, so the parts don't warp, but the Flashforge has a nice uh, transparent front cover so you can see inside, and the top also comes off as well. So you can lift that off uh, if you're printing PLA, for example, you want that heat to escape, and you put it back on if you're printing ABS and you want the heat to stay in. So it's a really nice, well thought out machine. It actually has two fans in the back as well, which will power up to keep the machine cold, if it's um, printing PLA, or actually just below too hot if it's printing ABS. So I've noticed if I'm printing a long ABS print, it'll pretty much sit silent until the internals get just a bit too hot, and it'll exhaust the, the hot air to bring it down a little bit, which is really good because you don't want the extruder motors overheating, which will then heat the filament before it gets into the extruder tubes, and then s sort of strip it by s uh, because it's softened up. I didn't explain that very well. But basically this machine stops it. The bed has a three-point adjustment system and it is fixed to the machine. So when you're taking prints off the bed, you have to be careful not to sort of really force it when you're taking prints off because the bed isn't removable and you might accidentally throw the platform out of skew. So one of the huge improvements that the Flashforge Dreamer has over the earlier uh, MakerBot machines is it has a full color touch screen with Wi-Fi built in and this is an awesome feature I've been using it heaps it's not very fast like the USB direct connection is much faster but the Wi-Fi is very very good if the machines you know 10 meters across the room and it actually works unlike the replicator fifth gen which like still is buggy and it took them ages to make that function even actually accessible. Alright, so I've said a lot of good things about the FlashForge Dreamer but now I've got to say some bad things and it's mostly these cartridges, these filament rolls. So these are completely non-standard, they're not one kilo, they're not 700 grams, they're actually more like five or 600 grams. And the design of the, of the machine means they fit inside the actual printer itself. Uh, which is a, it's, it's a nice touch, there's nothing outside it, but in terms of lots of printing, if you're printing 10 hour prints, which is very easy to do on these machines, you're going to end up with filament that's not quite enough to finish your next 10 hour print, and you'll be sort of wondering, do I have enough? Mm, not sure. And it's a real pain. So, what I did pretty much the first day I got my Flashforge Dreamer at work is I took a uh, standard one kilo roll and made an external roll holder and just piped it in via a Teflon tube. It's as simple as that. The machine does not care. It'll keep running fine. You don't have to reuse the silly rolls that it comes with. So, I'm sorry Flashforge. It's a nice idea, but in terms of actual usability, not so good. So, in terms of the software the machine uses, it uses something called Flash Print, which is sort of like Replicator G-ish built on the Slicer engine, but it's got Skyforge behind the scenes as well if you want to use it. It's okay, it's a little bit hack and it's a little bit ch uh, chingrish, but it does does the job. One thing it's terrible at is uh, nesting multiple parts, it just it doesn't know how to do it, you, there's no button to do it. 
So you often have to do that manually by individually assigning each one to be centered and on the platform then moving it. So I'm sure they'll update this and improve it but at the moment it's a bit clun clunky. But the really nice thing is they haven't made this machine locked down to their own brand of slicing. So you can use Slicer by itself, standalone, and just put the parameters in for the Flashforge Dreamer and use that. Or you can use something like Simplify 3D. And Simplify 3D has very good support generation, for example. So you can use that and just send the G-code straight to the, to the Flashforge Dreamer. And you can do that via the USB, via the SD card, or the Wi-Fi I mentioned, which is quite good as well. And a really nice touch that Flashforge have done now is they're shipping the machines with this. And, okay, you might be thinking, what's this? Is it a sheet of blue tape like the, the fifth gen MakerBots come with? Or what is it? It's actually build tack or whatever the material build tack is, but with the Flashforge logo and color scheme on it. So when I first got my Flashforge Dreamer at work, uh, it didn't come with this. It came with a roll of Kapton tape and a roll of blue tape. And we bought BuildTac to go with it. It, it works really well, actually. If you're printing ABS, you heat the bed to about 80 degrees or something. The bed is capable of something like 120, which is obscene. But that's way too hot for BuildTac. So 80 degrees is really good. But you know, the machine only came with Kapton tape, which is pretty rubbish for ABS prints. So it's actually shipping now with this stuff. And that's a really nice touch. So really, really impressed with Flashforge for doing that. And um, it looks really good in the bed too, instead of that crappy ABS juice and slurry and all that stuff. So that's the Flashforge Dreamer. Overall, a very nice machine. I don't really like the plasticky feel to it. You know, I would prefer a metal machine, like, you know, the UPS have a nice sort of metal chassis. I do like that. But overall, it's a very good machine, and the, the amount of sort of hacking and tinkering you can do with two extruders and the ability to run any slicing software you like is really good. You can run bronze fill through it, wood fill, flexible materials, uh, nylon, you know, the new carbon fiber filaments, I'm sure you'll have no issues. So it's very good for tinkerers and people who want just a slightly bigger printer than what the UPS offer to do ABS and like PLA prints and other things like that too. So I want to say thank you to X3D, who are a new Australian company who actually let me borrow this printer to do this review. And so yeah, look out for more uh, 3D printing reviews here on Makers Muse. I've teamed up with X3D and got, look really keen to do some stuff with them. They've got some filament that's coming in as well, so X3D branded filament. And they know their stuff, they've done some really good research and making sure the quality is up to scratch. So I'm really keen to test that out and do a review too. But yeah, thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'd love it if you want to subscribe. Stay tuned for more printer videos and such like that. And yeah, see you around here on Makers Muse. Bye guys!